Hey, I'm Lawrence Military, aka Corn Dog Hero, with a public service announcement from Peer Pressure Productions. Last Friday, February 2nd, uh, Netflix released a new original sci fi series called Altered Carbon. And this is a series based on a novel of the same name. Uh, the series is by Richard K. Morgan. It came out in 2002. It has two follow up novels, so it is a trilogy. And as far as I understand, it is complete. So, Kyle, you can watch it if you want. Um, really interesting. Uh, this series is to appeal to the same kind of people that HBO is going after with Westworld. And um, I think they're doing a good job of it. And that's kind of why there's a PSA, not a review, because I just want people to know that they have this option. Uh, so, Ultra Carbon stars Joel Kinnaman, who you may know better uh, uh, as uh, Alex Murphy from the RoboCop reboot. He also played Rick Flagg uh, in Suicide Squad, and that same character and actor had a cameo in Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Uh, he has also worked on another high-profile uh, Netflix series as Will Conway, uh, the Republican presidential uh, challenger to Frank Underwood in House of Cards. So uh, he's got some chops. Now, he is playing a character called Takeshi Kovacs, but he shares this role with another extremely talented actor named Will Yun Lee. Um, Will Yun Lee does all the flashback stuff. He's the OG uh, Kovacs. He's the original body. This series uh, revolves around a world where we have learned how to download the human consciousness and we can transplant it from uh, one body to another, including clones of yourself so that you can achieve a type of immortality. Uh, now, <clears throat> joining these two talented actors is uh, the amazing James Purefoy, who I first saw as, I think, Mark Anthony in uh, HBO's Rome. He was really great there. Uh, you may also know him from The Fox is the Following. Um, he's obviously the guy who isn't Kevin Bacon. Um, but one of his best roles, I think, was as Colville, who was secretly Edward the Black Prince, in A Knight's Tale, and he had one of the best lines, and uh, here it is, uh, this is my word, and as such is beyond contestation. Now, obviously, Mr. Purfoy does it way better than I do, but it's just one of those lines that has stuck with me for years. Uh, so joining, the, uh, joining those guys, we have some talented uh, women in lead roles. Uh, we have uh, Martha uh, Higaretta, if I'm saying that name right, uh, her character is Kristen Ortega, and she's equal parts beautiful and badass, and she's just amazing in the show. Uh, and I, while I'm not familiar with a lot of what Martha, the actress, has done, I will be looking forward uh, to seeing what she does in the future. Uh, this show does not really lack for beautiful and badass women. We have uh, Ditchin Lachman, who is playing uh, Takeshi's sister, Ray Lynn. Uh, I, I remember Ditchin from Dollhouse on Fox a number of years back. Uh, but uh, she's also played uh, Sky's ageless inhuman mother, uh, Jane Yang, uh, from Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, <clears throat> uh, she, she's done a number of other things, but they've got a great cast. Those aren't uh, everyone by any means, but uh, those are the top ones that stick out to me. Uh, so, the reason this isn't a review is because the critics have already kind of weighed in on this, and all I want to do is get the word out to my friends and fans who like good sci-fi. I consider this good sci-fi. Uh, now, the critics are coming out kind of mixed. Um, basically, we've got like a 65 score on Metacritic, a 61 on Rotten Tomatoes. However, on IMDb, it's got an 8.6 from their user base. It's got about an 8.1 on Metacritic last time I checked. It's got a 93% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So really good. Now, I said this was in uh, the vein of Westworld. So basically, uh, HBO came out a, a while back and said, uh, Westworld will do for sci-fi what Game of Thrones has done for fantasy. And I'm sure Netflix said, okay, great. We, we want people who want sci-fi, and we'll go find some sci-fi products, and this is one. Uh, it is mature sci-fi, so just like Westworld, it's following that HBO formula where you're going to have a liberal amount of nudity, both male and female, full frontal going on. Uh, we got plenty of sexual situations. We've got shocking twists. we got great characters, awesome action. Um, they did a great job of weaving the exposition uh, into the dialogue as things were explained to Takeshi, uh, and he was kind of caught up on what the state of the world is. Um, 
But uh, most importantly to me, you get so immersed in the world that flying cars and, and, and genetic modifications and robots and AIs and VR, all that stuff is like, okay, yeah, I, I just accept that that is possible. And with all of these miracles, we definitely have the dark side. And this is a dystopian future where because you can uh, transfer your consciousness from body to body, life has become kind of cheap. But immortality is really reserved for the truly wealthy. Um, and, and those truly wealthy are kind of referred to as meths, which is a play on Methuselah from the Bible, that they have lived hundreds of years. Um, so, uh, as I said, this is absolutely Netflix's uh, uh, kind of tie-in going after the same demographic as Westworld. So if you enjoyed Westworld, I think you ought to give this a shot. Uh, they've done a good job. It lacks the polish of Westworld, and of course it lacks Sir Anthony Hopkins. Uh, but I still found it, and most people still find it very, very entertaining. Uh, and that's why I immediately started a rewatch, and I'm already almost done with it just a week later for the second time. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to give too much away, so I will put some links uh, to the trailers down in the description. Uh, please like this video, uh, follow me, subscribe. Uh, leave some feedback on what kinds of videos you'd like me to do in the future, and I'll be happy to try to work those in. Thank you and bye.